a wireless connection. Oh, wait. Uh, it says live, but it doesn't have anything on it. So maybe just start talking. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, good morning, everybody. It's Clint here with CCUA with another Veg Out video. Today we're doing some backyard exploration here on the urban farm. And we're going to learn all about useful wild plants. So a lot of the times we think of our food as being, uh, you know, coming from farms and ranches and stuff like that. And most of it is, but food actually grows everywhere. You can walk out in the woods and find food to eat. Now there's a few things you got to be really careful of. We never want to eat any wild plants without having an adult with us and checking it out first because there are some plants that can hurt us too. So we just have to be extra, extra careful. Today we're going to learn about three plants that we can find all over the place that can be super duper helpful. So the first one you'll definitely recognize, we have an example right here, is a dandelion. So dandelions are a edible wild plant. That means you can eat them. Now the tricky thing about dandelions is that oftentimes we think that they are weeds. Uh, I think dandelions have to be a beautiful flower and a fantastic source of food for bees in the early springtime, but some people think that they're kind of a nuisance and ugly and don't want them around, and because of that they might spray them with poisons to help get rid of them. Now those poisons get rid of the plant, but they can also hurt us if we eat them. So if we find a dandelion in our yard, we just want to ask our parents before we eat it to make sure that it's safe. But if you do find a dandelion and you find out it is safe to eat, which I happen to know this one is, you can actually eat the leaves of the dandelion. You can see this one's pretty thin. There's not a lot of leaf on there, but you can still do it. It's a little bit bitter. It might be too bitter for some people that aren't used to that bitter kind of taste. But I happen to like it, especially mixed in with other greens and a salad. So we've got two other ones, two other plants we're going to look at today. We're going to walk up our hill. See, this might be a good example right here. This is chickweed. So when it starts to flower, it'll actually have a white flower on it. It makes it easier to identify, but it's got real tiny leaves. And you can look up a picture of this on whatever search engine you like to use on the internet to get a better idea of what it looks like but it's got sort of a reddish stem and these tiny green leaves that grow in sets until you get to the end of it and then you get a little cluster of flower buds now for this one I am NOT going to eat this one has a different use and it actually works really well with another plant called plantain and luckily they often grow really close to each other because they like the same kinds of soils so this is a plantain, not the, not the banana looking thing that you can find in the grocery store, just a small, leafy, very close to the ground uh, plant. This one also has kind of a reddish stem if you can see down in there, and then it gets a little wider as it grows out. I think there are 11 types of plantains that can be found in Missouri, and I'm not I'm not sure if this one is narrow plantain or broadleaf plantain, but either way, you can still use it in a similar way. You can actually take both of these leaves, both of these plants, and probably the most common tool would be to use a mortar and pestle, so something to smush them together and mash them into a paste, but you can even just use your fingers and just kinda, kinda crush it up until it starts getting really juicy. And if you were to mash this until it was totally a paste and you couldn't see the leaves anymore, we would call that a poultice. And what you can do is you can take this leaf mash and you can actually use it to make bug bites itchless. So if you have a mosquito bite 
and you see these two plants laying around you can mash them up and then just rub it on there and it'll actually help your bug bite feel better so plantain and chickweed are those two all right friends those are the only three we've got for you today as the seasons progress we're probably going to do some more of these useful wild plant videos just as more plants come up that we can use in different ways so again before you eat or use any wild plant always 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 make sure you talk to an adult first to make sure it's safe so thanks for joining us today everybody and we'll see you all again next week